Hi, and welcome to episode 41 of Culture Watch Radio. I'm Andrew Smith, and with me is Bill Muhlenberg. Bill, it's been a long-running joke that the weatherman is never right, yet we still have this segment at the end of the news. Now they want us to give up our freedoms over an extremely long-range forecast. What is the world coming to? Yes, Andrew, uh, it's not just our freedoms they want us to lose, our livelihoods, our jobs, our economies, all in the name of saving the planet. Uh, We've kind of heard this before, actually, the whole COVID alarmism based on modeling, which is often turned out to be pretty bad indeed. The same here with climate change modeling that goes way ahead, uh, usually shown to be quite wrong, has been for decades. So now we have this uh, 26th UN Climate Change Gab Fest, I mean conference, coming up. Uh, We do know a lot of Hollywood uh, types and elites and, uh, you know, those who like to have photo ops will uh, fly over to Glasgow in their private jets, make all kinds of emissions on the way, but they'll feel good about themselves and about saving the planet. But as you've already hinted, uh, it's the rest of us who will suffer. The economy will suffer. Uh, Energy prices will be going through the roof with their aim of a net zero. Uh, Emissions, uh, industries will collapse. Australia, which is a fossil fuel superpower, will especially suffer. And yet all because, uh, well, the, the real big players here, China, India, they're getting away with murder in terms of emissions. We contribute about 1% as does the UK, and they're going through an energy crisis now as well. Uh, the whole thing is madness, and it is, as you say, kind of like getting the weather report and uh, showing up at the picnic with your umbrella when it's a perfectly sunny day. Uh, you know, we got to take this with a grain of salt. Well, there's got to be a few people that understand what this is really about. I mean, this is a huge gravy train and they're just waiting for it to get signed up and made real. Well, yes, exactly. Um, Same again with the whole... uh COVID alarmism, there's a lot of similarities here. There's some people who actually profit big time. Uh, There'll certainly be the big banks and others who are going to profit with all the so-called emissions, carbon offsets and the like. Uh, Lawyers always make a killing. In COVID, you had big pharma increasing its crop of billionaires. So in all these, you have... uh, Well, not just some who will profit and some who will lose badly, but you also have pushes being made by those who don't really like the West, who don't like the free market, who don't like industrialization. The very things that have lifted the masses out of poverty, these are the things that are being targeted. People like Klaus Schwab of the Great Reset, he's been pushing uh, his population reduction, his end to uh, private property, his push for a global economic situation with COVID. And of course, he wants to do the very same on the back of the so-called climate emergency. These crises, whether real or imagined, are always great for the globalists to push their agendas. So uh, again, somebody uh, wins big time, but most of us uh, were on the losing end. Yeah, well, there's a lot of somebody out there. Now, you think to yourself, It's a really, really big conference. How many people could possibly be going? Well, Michael Smith News got the guest list and there are 22,300 attendees for this conference. Yes, well, probably half of them from Hollywood, uh, Greta and her family probably tag along, all the usual suspects. Uh, Again, this is a a gab fest for the rich and the elites. Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister, was hesitant at first about going, but he's been pushed to go. Uh, His green credentials, it seems, he has to keep uh, polished and shining. Um, So, yeah, everybody, well, mind you, the, the leader of China the biggest emitter in the world. He's not going. Uh, Those who should be, I suppose, are not going, but those who don't need to be are going. Again, it's it's a gab fest. People show up. 
They uh, pat themselves on the head. They're talking about this net zero emissions by 2050. Well, look, the truth is ScoMo and all the others probably won't even be alive by then. It won't be their problem. They won't be around to see the damage. They won't have to pay the bills. It'll be their children, their grandchildren. And the sad truth is nobody still has any idea what all this is going to cost. Nobody's put a price because, well, you can't. What is, what, how much are you going to have to pay to get net zero emissions by 2050? So, again, easy for us or our leaders today to talk uh, tough on this, but they won't be around. They won't have to pay the price. Yeah. Another person who's been asking and calculating the price is Senator Matt Canavan, and here he is on Sky News. I mean, what I want to see too, though, here I'm sure everybody wants to see is some answers to some basic questions. Uh, how much is this going to cost? Uh, uh, like the last election, the, the coalition, uh, myself and Angus Taylor, went out there and, and said that uh, a 45% reduction in emissions would cost uh, 336,000 jobs. That was modelling done by the eminent economist Dr Brian Fisher, who used to head up our agricultural economics organisation, been involved in climate change negotiations. Well, how many jobs would be lost this time? Last time we said that uh, electricity prices would, would increase by 58%. How much will they this time? How much will the pension have to go up by under net zero emissions to compensate older Australians for the extra costs of achieving this target? We don't have answers to those basic questions. So not sure how you could sign up to something uh, when simple questions can't seem to be answered. Bill, it's pretty reasonable for the average man to want to know how much is this going to cost? Oh, absolutely. Matt is certainly right. In fact, the Nationals have been the trying to bring Scott Morrison and the Liberals down to reality. It's like saying, we got this wonderful new product here. You're really going to like it. Uh, just sign, a, the, you know, we got a blank check here. You know, don't worry about the numbers. Just sign your name to the check. Uh, nobody would do that. Whether you're buying a car, buying a home, you want to know what it's going to cost. It's madness not to know what it's going to cost. And yet none of these leaders can tell us at all what it's going to cost. It's Well, one attempt a couple of years ago by a reputable body said it's going to be over a trillion dollars to even get close to this. So that was a few years ago. So if nobody knows what it's going to cost, why are we uh, being pushed to write, uh, you know, sign a blank check. It's madness. And uh, as I say, those who are going to suffer the most, well, it'll be our kids, our grandkids. Most of the people making these decisions today, they will not be around in 2050. And why are the media who are in lockstep with each other refusing to say, hey, China isn't even bothering and we're so small compared to what China is doing? Yeah, again, it, it's just madness, and the Nationals have been right to uh, push this. He did, Matt did mention, you know, it was the last election, the unwinnable election. The Libs were not supposed to win, but how did they win? They won by standing against Labour and the Greens and their mad uh, energy and environment policies. The electorate did not want uh, what Labour and the Greens were on about. And now, sadly, ScoMo has gone full tilt in their direction. But the truth is, it's places like China that have over 30% of the world's emissions. But because they're still considered to be a developing country, they're under no obligations whatsoever until 2030 to start lifting their own game. So they're building uh, coal-fired fi uh, power stations, you know, in the hundreds. They're getting away with murder. They're sending up the emissions. And yet they have uh, absolutely no... Uh, problems in doing what they're doing and the rest of the world is targeting places like Australia, Britain, both of which contribute about 1%. In other words, negligible. And of course, carbon dioxide is just a very small fraction of the various greenhouse gases. So this whole thing is just madness, targeting the wrong countries, making the wrong people, that is you and I suffer. Uh, and while the big boys, those who are really doing the damage, go scum 
about trees. So this is going to hurt big time. It's going to lose jobs. Uh, agriculture is going to suffer. Mining is going to suffer. Employment's going to go down. Energy costs are going to go up. Economies are going to be destroyed. Simply look at Britain and Europe right now, going through massive energy crises. Power costs are going up the roof. Uh, well, Britain, 40% reliance on renewables. Well, it's nice when the wind blows, when the sun shines, but guess what? When they don't, you're in trouble. So right now, the UK has got to uh, reuse uh, some of the old coal-fired uh, power stations just to get by. So uh, this is the madness we're pushing. And yet, uh, again, it's the average peon like you and I. We suffer, not the elites. So, Bill, what do we do? How do we save ourselves from this? Well, that's always the million-dollar question. Uh, There has been a petition going around actually telling Scott Morrison not to go to Glasgow, but, uh, well, he's well and truly committed to going now. Uh, Again, we do have people like Matt Canavan, some of the other nationals who are the voice of reason and common sense. Certainly, uh, everyone can and should contact their own local MP and say, look, committing to something like this that we have no idea what it's going to cost, but we do know it's going to cost jobs, it's going to cost livelihoods. Uh, I would say everybody concerned here in Australia should be contacting their MPs and saying, wait a minute, slow down until we get some kind of actual costs on this. It's suicide to go ahead with it. So that would be a start. But uh, as always, it takes people speaking out and speaking out a lot if we want to get heard. Yeah. Otherwise, all bets are off. Always on the pulse. There's more at the Culture Watch website. And we'll see you again next week with another episode of Culture Watch Radio. Subscribe where you listen at SoundCloud, YouTube, and Rumble so you won't miss a thing.